Patriarchy is a system that's been started ever since then. But feminism is sort of like the way to catch up. So back in the day, women could not vote. Women could not do a lot of the- Neither could men. For the vast majority of all human history, neither men or women could vote. Women there's could a vote, very, that's correct. There's a very, very small, comparatively speaking, a very small portion of history where men were able to vote and women weren't. But if you look at the whole scale of human history, neither people could vote. Okay, It would okay. be, it would either be, uh, you'd have a monarch mm -hmm. or there'd be like uh, this uh, royalty. Mm -hmm. um, or you, there was a period where it'd be proper, property owners. Sure, okay. So in the United States, um, the first feminist was like Abigail Adams. She said, if we don't get the same rights, like a rebellion's gonna happen, basically. She wrote that to her husband. And so patriarchy is a system, feminism is like a movement. So I do think that fe the feminists in the past have done a lot and we've gotten a lot of our rights and they're, they're bound by law. That was so not the first feminist at all, not even close. No, um, also the Plato, first, Plato the was the ones, one who the said, can I continue like, please? No, Plato can wasn't I either, but hang on, let me correct this. Dubois uh, directly contradicted this. When you're talking about the first wave feminists, which came out of Russia, especially their idea was I was talking about in the United the States and I could back that up by research. I was talking about in the United States by multiple research. I could back that up. That Abigail Adams yeah, was the first person. No, okay. no, that's down. not even true. Even but I'm not, so what's your we point? haven't gone to my point. point. Just make my your point. point is, is that patriarchy is a system. Feminism is a movement. So feminism has caught like females up to males to a certain point, but there's still underlying things that are still happening. And like, I don't think that females are oppressed. I don't call myself a feminist. I think that we have gained all our, our same rights, but I do think that patriarchy is still a system that still has its underlying layers in the way that we govern ourselves. That's I do want to just point out one thing when it came to the right to vote, and this is speaking within the United States, only a 50 year period passed between the ratification of the 15th amendment, which gave all men the right to vote in 1870, and the 19th amendment, <laughs> In 1920, so 50 years, there was only a 50 years in America that all men could vote, that women could not. Jeremy says, do you know how many DV shelters are accessible to men in the US? Zero. We need to bridge the gap to make progress. I don't want my daughter to live in a world like this. Uh, Plato, he, F Plato, he dead. I'm assuming, okay. Uh, all right, thank you, Jeremy, appreciate that. Really quick, um, just going around the table, uh, I think I was asking the question, how are women oppressed? Um, can I ask a question? Okay. What's your motive in asking us this? Uh, because we want to probe the worldview to see if we have potential disagreements with your worldview. Okay. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious that at least you and I don't agree on a lot of things, but that's fine. Um, I would say that the the traditional view of feminism that many people have, that the idea is the movement for for women to be have the same rights to have the, to be viewed as equal to men in the eyes of society, would be like a pretty generic um, view of feminism. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think that I saw a, a, one of those comments pop up on the screen that was talking about um, how men don't have access to. I think it was. DV shelters, I think they make mm -hmm. domestic violence. Yep. Um, and I think that's a really good point. I think that there's plenty of ways that men, I think oppressed would be a, a strong word to use considering that we're looking at this in the context of the patriarchy. But I would say that there's plenty of ways that men are underrepresented and that men could use a little bit of help in maybe the eyes of society or the law or however you want to say it in terms of um, gender roles in society. I think that there's unfair expectations that are placed on men and women as well. I think that women have been systematically oppressed from since the beginning of time. Um, if you want to argue with me on that, go I ahead. Can, I could argue on that. But I could argue with you on why that. Why would you argue with me on that? Do you, well, <laughs> well you're, because the, the whole thing with feminism is it's, it's trying to look at the issues that women have. And I think for the longest period of time, uh, men didn't really take a thorough analysis of the ways in which they were disadvantaged. But feminism has sort of opened the floodgates because when you start looking at, okay, well, here's the way that us women have it worse, and men are to blame, by the way, and it's men's fault, then men are going to start to 
want to make to assert potential counterclaims to your positions. And then men are going to start to look and say, well, if we're going to start to look at everything through this prism, this lens of gender, then we're going to also look, because feminism is playing a comparison game. It's saying women have it worse than men. So if you put that out there into the ether, into the universe, it then opens up men to say, well, hold on, let's actually do an analysis on the ways in which we don't have it so great. So for example, I mean, you often hear things about the wage gap, reproductive rights, although that doesn't really occur to me to be a gender thing because men have absolutely zero reproductive rights. Women have far more reproductive rights compared to men. But you start looking at these things and then men can start looking at, okay, well, what are the sort of uh, gendered negative life outcomes for men? And we look at things like- Grid One Motorsports donated $200. Feminists have been supporting the fact that men are better women than actual women are. How can you support this? Women are being oppressed by women who hate men and want the world to burn. Be better. So just to finish my point here. So thank you, good one. Appreciate it. So if men start to actually make an analysis of the, way, the negative life outcomes that they have, you can look at, for example, men are more likely to delete themselves. They're less likely to get higher education. They're less likely to go to college. You go to UCSB, right? What's the gender breakdown there? I think it's probably 60-40. Now, back in the day, it was evidence of sexism that there were more men going to university than women. Now that's completely flip-flopped. There's more women going to universities than men. Are you prepared to argue that, that, that that's evidence of sexism towards men? I would suspect not because any time women become uh, overrepresented in some area, that is still equality in the eyes of women. It's never inequality if it's 80% of women are in this desirable work field. That's never viewed as for sexist reasons towards men. There's some other examples here. Men are, they're more likely to die in war. They're forced into war. Uh, they're more likely to die on the job. They're more likely to be incarcerated. They're more likely to be victims of police misconduct and police killings. They're more likely to be homeless. There's a whole bunch of other scenarios. And in fact, immediately upon birth, if we look at within the first uh, 24 hours of birth, men are immediately uh, have their genitals mutilated. That's an instant. Are you talking about circumcision? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you laugh at it, but it actually is a barbaric practice. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. I, you're and right. Actually, I, don't, most, I haven't most, viewed it that way before, but sure. Yeah, most women are the ones who are opting to have their male sons uh, have their genitals mutilated. But um, there's all kinds maybe of we'll ways. Maybe we'll call that the uh, mother's stitch, maybe. <laughs> almost, almost all men in the United States have, have a circumcision, and the reasons are dubious at best. Um, I'm not in favor of it, but I'm not really, we don't have to get into a circumcision conversation. <laughs> so, I mean... Uh, I mean, didn't that initiate, like, a lot of the things you mentioned are kind of initiated by men, though, right? I, I mean, not the circumcision yeah, thing, but... Circumcision um, so, women were the ones that first started a circumcision? It's from the Bible. Isn't well, actually, you know, it's funny. When it comes to female genital mutilation in some of these other countries, it's not something that's in the U.S., but it's actually women that tend to uphold that specific tradition yeah. against other women. So, is your, you're about to make a but-it's-men's-fault argument. So, no, is it, wasn't. are they less victims because the perpetrator of the the cause of this is because they're men no i wasn't about to say that i was i feel like it's like the opposite like women will like remember how i mentioned that earlier that women's uphold the patriarchy like that kind of goes with my point like if a woman is um mutilating another woman's genitalia it's because of like patriarchy at the end of the day it's wait not it's it's okay i anyways um so to kind of put the final point in what I was saying here. Uh, I'm actually prepared to just disregard actually most of my points that I made and focus in on just one. So you said from the beginning of time, women have been oppressed and men haven't. Oh, I knew you were going to bring up this one. <laughs> I, okay, that was a really big blanket statement that you could probably poke holes in all you wanted. Um, I think that, sure, maybe that was a bit of like an absolute. Um, I think that the issues that women face in society, and you're right, this whole idea of feminism is exists in this comparative to men who has mm -hmm. it worse. And I think that there is a lot of issues with the, the modern take of feminism. I think that it's 
it hasn't gone too far. I would never say that. But I think that we've lost sight of really what the goal was supposed to be and that it should be a basis of equity and not equality. Um, and, and really, what are the rules? That, what are the things that are facing men? What are the, the issues that are facing women? Mm-hmm. And how can we support both? It's not in a matter of putting down men to bring up women or saying that all men suck and trying to vilify one gender or the other. Well, let's just go back to the bear thing. You guys all would rather be in a forest alone with a bear than with a man. Most, not all of you, but most of you <laughs> answer that way. Isn't that sort of vilifying men to say that the, uh, any given random man is more dangerous than a bear? I think after our hour and a half conversation, um, I reconsidered the way that I was looking at um, the scenario and I wouldn't necessarily use the same logic that Andrew was talking about um, now. I think maybe I would reconsider my answer. Okay. 